So, der nächste Talk heißt Routerzwang und Funkabschottung. Was Aktivisten davon lernen können und der Vortragende ist der Max Mehl. Ähm, ich weiß nicht, also mir ist es vor ein paar Jahren noch passiert, da wollte ich einen neuen Router anschließen zu Hause und habe dann bei meinem Provider angerufen, habe gesagt, hier, ich habe einen neuen Router, ich würde den gerne anschließen. Ja, da ja, muss ich sie mal weiter verbinden. Es hat dann eine ganze Weile gedauert, es waren auch mehrere Anrufe notwendig, um dann irgendwann mal da entsprechend konfigurieren zu können, dass ich einen anderen Router anschließen möchte. ist schon ein paar Jahre her und das hat sich jetzt geändert, und zwar im Sommer diesen Jahres. Das ist einigen sehr aktiviert, sehr engagierten Aktivisten zu verdanken, die sich da sehr äh, ins Zeug gelegt haben, um das zu ändern. Und das ist toll, dass Ihnen das gelungen ist. Und wir müssten bei vielen anderen Sachen... Right. Welcome to the English translation of this talk. Compulsory Routers and Radio Lockdown. And Max Mehl, who has been an activist in this field for a long time, is here to tell us about what that is and what activists can learn. He is a politi political scientist and works for the Free Software Foundation Europe and is and lives in the German town of Münster for the moment, at the moment. And your translators are Sebastian and Neoblast. Okay, thanks for the introduction and your attention. As I said, I will talking about the compulsory routers and radio lockdown and how you can get politically active, politically active. We are in a sort of paradise of net activism here, one could say. The history of the Chaos Computer Club is the history of, of people that were technical nerds and hackers, but went into the political sphere and tried to change politics with their technological background. And the, that is exactly what the Free Software Foundation Europe, who I work for, does. Um, we are here to make people, let people to be able to control their technology because in too many cases technology controls us and uh, we have a lot to do with politics in that regard of course and I will be talking about two political, um, well, problems that have accompanied my, me for a long time and are still there and I will talk about, tell you that it's not that hard to get active politically. Of course, these are big topics, one of them even an EU topic, but there are so many political problems that exist. You just have to look towards the next community, um, municipalities that use so much proprietary software, um, problems that we as half knowledgeable technological people notice immediately and I would like to encourage you to get active yourself and in the second half of my talk after I've talked about the router the combustion routers for a while uh, to get us all on the same level as it were I'd like to talk about what I took away from this I am not an absolute political professional now I haven't had decades of political experience but I've taken quite a lot of things away, things that I think could be used for any kind of activism and campaigning. This is about who, how to prepare best if you've identified a topic, how do I form alliances, how do I find allies, and how do I communicate my issue to the public, what can be done. We only have 30 minutes, so it will not go into so much depth, but I hope you'll take something away anyway. And now, at the end, I will talk about a few um, obstacles that you might encounter, that uh, hurdles that could bring the whole thing down, but with a few simple tricks and the right attitude, I think it's easy to get around this. I'll begin with compulsory routers. Uh, who of you has heard something about the compulsory routers? Okay, we can skip that slide. Uh, just very, very briefly for the one or two people that put, one or two people that haven't. It's about the fact that routers are forced upon you. Router and modems are the kind of the, the, the guards, the uh, door guides for all the traffic that comes from me into the world, everything that goes out into, into the internet, uh, maybe TV streams and things like that as well. And until uh, roughly August, this year, August 2016, these devices did not belong to us in many cases, particularly for cable providers. 
And these people said that our network includes the router. And the router is the network termination point. Only once I've connected that Ethernet cable to my laptop, that's my, where the consumer network begins. So everything from the router or the first modem, the first device at the wall into the network was said to belong to the provider, which of course is a fatal thing because in that case we cannot control. <clears throat> if we cannot swap this device, if we don't have authority over it, that is bad for our security, bad for trust into this kind of hardware. We do not know what these devices that are basically black boxes are running. It's bad for innovation because many internet providers tend to choose the cheapest modem or router and put it out on the market. And there's no way of, of developing competition for better devices, which we see today with cable routers. This market is only slowly starting up and there's not much choice, not much innovation. It's bad for compatibility. We have often seen that certain telephones, certain internet technologies are not compatible. The standard devices are, that providers give us that in some cases maybe could be exchanged, but in many cases could not. And of course, it's bad for free software because if I operate a router and want to operate a router that's based on free software such as OpenDWT, that would not be possible. Now, from January 2013, this topic became a topic for us because uh, and now since August 2016, the law says it's possible to uh, obtain your own router no matter which kind of provider you're using, but this process, the, the fact whether these providers actually go along with that new law, that is something that still keeps us busy today. Having a good law, which fortunately happened, is not enough. You have to see how the implementation works of the law. Right, next issue. Again, the standard question for the statistics. Who of you has heard something about radio lockdown? Ah, that's significantly less, significantly fewer people. Now, in my opinion, this is actually worse. This is a EU, an EU directive with the elegant name 2014-43-EU. Uh, now, this uh, names, uh, this kind of forbids non-conforming software on devices, prohibits them. Now, that means software that possibly would not match with the existing broadcast regulations, uh, sort of signal strength technologies that certain broadcast devices have to contain. So producers have to, as soon as the directive is in force, uh, as soon as makers, manufacturers actually have to apply this new law, which will be in next summer, July, it says, um, they would basically have to check each firmware for conformity and if a firmware is not found to be con to be conforming, or if it's unknown whether it's conforming, they have to ensure that this firmware is not cannot be loaded onto a device. We're talking about any kind of broadcasting device, any device that can receive or send radio signals, not just routers, therefore, but also smartphones, Wi-Fi chips in laptops, GPS re receivers. Everything has to be locked down to prevent any software running on them that might break those regulations. Now that, in effect, is a kind of DRM, of course. It's a lockdown that manufacturers have to implement by certain signature lists. There's a lot of unclear details here, but that, of course, keeps us very busy because that is very bad for free software projects, for Freifunk projects that offer uh, Wi-Fi to the public, to open WRT. So any kinds of projects that want to put software onto devices on develop software that is supposed to be put on devices. And there are many of those. So that again is bad for competition and innovation. It's a very normal business model for companies to <clears throat> buy finished products in shops and then put their own software on it, such as Wi-Fi providers. So their business model is very much in danger here and it's Definitely not a good thing for, uh, for fair competition. It's bad for security because 
uh, we cannot put our own firmware that we trust on our devices. And I do not have to tell you how many security holes there are in default firmware of of uh, broadcasting devices. And of course, it's bad for sustainability. It used to be possible for routers that do not receive updates anymore to uh, put open WRT on them uh, to continue using the device. In particular, if you have security in mind, uh, you would have to throw devices away as soon as, or if they don't get updates anymore and you can't flash them yourself. So that has been something to deal with since the autumn of 2015, although the directive was actually passed in 2014, but for a long time it unfortunately wasn't noticed, and uh, this will be keeping us busy for a, few year to, for a few years to come, and we hope that the EU Commission will define certain classes of devices that will not be affected by this directive, so that these negative consequences could be mitigated somewhat. So, I will now, as I said, I will be going through some small tricks that I have acquired um, by uh, that are about getting active politically, not just applicable to large projects such as uh, radio lockdown and compulsory routers, but also for smaller projects and activities. For example, if you in your municipality want to push free software because you see that huge amounts of money are being spent on non-free software, on uh, restrictive con con uh, contracts, and you want to get active. You may, be think you may be able to think of thousands of other examples where you are very clear that politically something has to be done. And I'll say it again, technical solutions are only a solution for a short time or, a, or the medium term. If you want to have sustainable change, sustained change, you have to be, get active politically, and it's not too hard to do. If you are prepared well, you'll have done a lot of the work already. Before getting active, before you pick a topic, or if you have picked up your topic, and or you know roughly what it should be, then I recommend a realistic and precise target. You find an objective, what you want to achieve, Often this will be voluntary work, and uh, you want to put this in for a clear target. This was a problem with the radio lockdown. Uh, we had this directive on the table and didn't quite know how should we approach this? How can we mitigate the problem? The directive had been passed, it had been through Parliament. There's not much to do realistically to reverse the whole directive. So then you start finding, looking for ways of, precise ways of twisting things a bit and not, and that's important to say, do not define unrealistic targets and believe you can change the whole world tomorrow. Have a small target, targets that can change as well. Very important, it's also, it sounds trivial, but it's very important, collect information and keep, uh, maintain that information well and process it well. That's what we did with the uh, compulsory routers and the radio lockdown. The knowledge that we acquired over hours of looking at complex technological issues, uh, we were thinking about presenting that. Uh, we had the FSFE website, of course, that was an obvious place, but if you get active, start a blog, set up a wiki, uh, for the organizations that want to work on this. Uh, so help others to get into the topic quicker than you have done. Uh, that's how you can collect more information, uh, motivate people to, to deal with the topic, particularly if it's, if it's technological topics. When the topic runs for about two or three years, like this um, problem with the router being uh, required, it helps to have a timeline. We did this um, with uh, router requirements using journalists in order to show them when the topic had started, what had happened, what was there for um, uh, opinions that people had. Later came the economic ministry to, to, to uh, contribute. To understand all of this, it's a little bit difficult, so it helps to have a little bit of a timeline for this. It's also a good motivation to see how much you've already accomplished. 
Another important thing is to have a uh, have common terminology. It's we're very happy that with this term for uh, for required routers has come along. In German, this word is very well known, and many people raised their hand when I asked about this about who knows this. Um, it's it's used from most people, and also from the media, not only from you. It's a little bit more difficult with the uh, with the directive because it's coming from the EU. In English, we call it radio lockdown, but in but in German, it's a little bit more difficult because you want to try to bring it over across different different languages, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. If you want to become active, try to find some sort of sl slogan or term you can use to describe these things. If you have different supporters, then it helps to be able to work all together. Speaking of, of supporters, it's always good also to build alliances. This doesn't have to be a huge topic. This can also be a communal topic in which you can work on. I can't say it enough. Look over the table and look for uncommon agents, uncommon members. For example, in on the Congress, we won't probably do much with companies, although they might also find the political situation not very good for their company. Try to work also with uh, with journalists and with NGOs, industry associations. We work with associations with consumer protection people uh, when it was about compulsory routers, but also with radio lockdown, we work with individual companies uh, whose complete existence was threatened by this. And it helps then to, to form new networks. Communication networks are important. We use mailing lists, but many activists prefer something like Slack or IRC channels or whatever. So. Uh, if you have a few people that you work with, uh, find ways of activating many people in a very short time. Uh, so consider whatever you are working at, find a unique a single communication channel. It's important to give yourselves feedback or each other and ask for feedback too. For example, if you write a blog entry about the topic that you are busy with, uh, it, it's worth asking your supporters or completely new people what they think about that. And if there are things that you do not completely know about yet, things that you're not quite sure about, how to deal with certain information, for example, things that go over your head in a way, um, get others involved. It, it's good. Um, we did this with the router lockdown. We had this whole contractual or, or the, this legal text from the European Parliament. That's not the most exciting kind of nighttime lecture, not the shortest either. So it's it's legalese, basically. And of course, I'm not a great expert on this. I had to ask people and ask, what does this mean? So there are still things that are unclear to us uh, about the way such a directive should be interpreted and work with it in an offensive or proactive way and say, this is clear to us already, but this I don't quite understand yet, uh, and turn this into a kind of critique if, if that's appropriate. It's ideal if you could uh, find get others involved in actions. It was quite difficult with the router lockdown, uh, to the radio lockdown directly. It was hard to find people who we, who we could tell what to do because de facto the, the law existed. We were dealing with the federal network agency in Germany. And, uh, oh, but they're both compulsory routers. Uh, it was very hard to 
uh, define what people could do. Now that we have the law since the 1st of August, and or final, that the rules can be chosen freely by people, we have uh, we actually found an action that we could do to get others involved. We, we sent out test devices and asked them to, to experiment whether these devices would work on their connections. So that can generate more echo and get more people informed about the new opportunities. And of course, it's good for us to get some, some feedback. Does it work? Can you now use the new law and, and link, connect to new devices? It does. It is possible in many cases, we found, but we couldn't have found it in any other way. Uh, concerning radio lockdown, we had a public statement, uh, wrote up a few paragraphs about the whole topic, our demands, and thanks to a fantastic idea of our Freifunk friends, uh, the whole thing turned into, into a public letter that, that organizations and companies could sign. And that now gave us 40 institutions that are supporting our demands. And that, at the same time, is a huge foundation to find supporters and alliances. And if you have something like that, with the topic that you want to work on, that is a very, very big thing to have. In general, to just very shortly say, uh, petitions, online petitions, is not something that we have a lot of experience with and it's important to not let those petitions peter out, as it were. And if you haven't got the supporter base and try to start an online petition from, from scratch, out of thin air, it might just fail and could actually result in you wasting a lot of time. That is my experience, at least. Maybe others have had some other, other experience. The last point, and maybe the most important one, is communication. You also have to do everything that you're working on, you have to bring it to others. And, and therefore you have to ask, for who should this be? Why am I doing all of this? Am I doing this only for myself? Or am I doing this for my friends or for a hacker space? But maybe also thinking a little bit further, maybe there are other, a lot of other people who would also be interested in this. And then you can try to find arguments for why this would be interesting to other people. Once you've found some, something, you've, you've broken it all up, then it's nice to try to quickly build a description of this using the uh, three-sentence rule. You want to describe your topic in three different sentences. And that is, what's it about? Why is it important? And then how can we actually solve this? What's an option that we can use in order to solve this problem? And we can do this in three different sentences, and then we can reuse that for everything. If we're talking to journalists, if we're talking to colleagues, but also possibly in other um, um, works as well. Blog articles. So even if the things get very complex, you can always see it broken down into these three sentences. And particularly if you want to talk to journalists, uh, as I said, this can be uh, the local journalist from, from the small paper, have a, an, ex an interesting story to tell them. This was quite easy with compulsory routers because as soon as we noticed that there were public statements and hearings and individual statements, uh, we heard that the 330 people that had answered to the first public consultation, only about a handful of the answers was in favor of compulsory routers and the rest, more than 300 people, were against it, including companies, of course. That means that the story was quite simple to tell. All citizens are basically against compulsory routers, most companies are, and only a very small handful, uh, such as the net internet providers and, uh, and network operators, are in favor of it. Now, this is, of course, a fantastic David against Goliath story, and if you have something like that, it's a very good introduction to give to journalists a good hook for them to use, and that motivates you. And in this way, 
you can keep giving updates and keep the whole issue going. Now, um, praise and critique is very important. Praise is underrated. When it come, came to the compulsory routers, the economic ministry, the federal ministry in Germany, which uh, took, took away leadership of the whole dossier away from the network agency, probably they weren't happy with the publications they had made. And they then drafted a law which was surprisingly good. We were wondering ourselves how this kind of full U-turn could have taken place, because what the network agency had written had been quite disappointing. And that we praised, not overwhelmingly, but it's important not to forget to sometimes give praise to politicians, to authorities, administrations, do critique of, of, as well, of course, but that's more easy to do for activists. And last but not least, get out of the filter bubble, the one that you build yourselves. This here is a huge filter bubble. I can tell you 90% of the people, 100% of the people uh, are against compulsory routers and radio lockdown. I couldn't say from the people in this room, but what about the rest, the 99.9% .9 of the general population? Keep trying to find new actors, new agents. I've been overrunning slightly, but just briefly to go to the obstacles, what can happen? Uh, something that will probably happen is that you, you are suffering from information overload. And what, of course, helps there is to find partners as early as possible that you can work with, or if necessary, kind of reduce the topic. You can't always cover everything. You can't always achieve everything. So pick a particular aspect and keep working on that, and maybe then extend from that later if you have more resources. What can also happen is that there is no interest, there is, that there is indifference in the public. Uh, the router thing was kind of slow at first. Well, routers, yeah, everyone has router, but who knows really what they are? Uh, large parts of the population don't. And what helps there is to link it to another topic, which was what was which what was very good was the whole Snowden affair that then came up, where the security aspect could be linked. If you have free software in in public administration that you want to support, uh, you could talk about tax squandering, tax money being squandered, uh, taxpayers' money. And uh, if there is progress, particular progress, if positive progress, interest can quickly increase. There were, for a long, long time, there was hardly anything of the expert press were publishing things. But then, towards August, we had Süddeutsche Zeit computer built. So large general and large computer papers, more or less every important paper. So uh, you wouldn't believe how quickly things can get going. And uh, what can also happen is that there are phases of boredom that cannot be avoided. You can kind of bridge them by working on something else and maybe do some preparation work. Uh, the radio lockdown thing, there was not a lot that could be done for a long time. We were kind of in midair, not quite knowing where to go. But then things can make, take a turn very quickly. Talking of radio lockdown, there have been a few opportunities that have shown up. We uh, will probably be able to join the working group or the expert group for, for the commission, the EU commission. And the whole thing has got momentum again. And I hope that we can keep uh, pick up on that and, and, and make it stronger. So keep going and know that these things can happen. Uh, we haven't got too many too much time for discussion, but please go to the FSFE assembly, which I think is on the first floor. And at 1930, just after this, there will be a session on radio lockdown where we will try to bring as many organizations in as we can, organizations that want to work on this, a uh, kind of working meeting. Tomorrow then, There'll be a follow-up to this, to, to that meeting. Community Wi-Fi is Unite at, ni at 19 hours, 7 p.m. And also very nice, a lightning talk from a scientific working group at the Technical University of Darmstadt, whom I had not heard about at all. They are holding a lightning talk about the same topic, and they'll be saying why this is very bad from a scientific point of view. So again, I'll invite you to be there. I'll go there myself. Thanks for your attention. Ja, vielen Dank. Das war jetzt 
ein wenig länger als gedacht. Sorry. Das ist ja, ich, ich, ich. So, if you have questions, we don't have much time left for them, but go to the microphone. And the signal angel has a question from the internet. We have multiple questions from the internet. We're going to start with the first. Someone's asking as a radio amateur, how does it look? Uh, because some of these, some of these roles with the uh, that the radio is trying to, how does it look then with uh, looking to con control what's done on airport? The answer is, I would like to say that in the directive for the radio shutdown, there is a there is a, a exception for amateurs there. So this would allow uh, m many to experiment as well. So devices that are suffering from, from this lockdown, uh, of course, will make it harder for radio amateurs to get good hardware. And, and our position, of course, is that that is a very bad thing. And we want to have as many exceptions from that directive as we possibly can. Another question. Okay, I will be the person holding the lightning talk tomorrow about the scientific initiative. And I would like to add, it's not just about why it's bad for science, for, for scientists, but also what we can do. And uh, we have a common statement that we prepared, and we are looking for scientific groups that want to work on devices of all kinds and would like to be able to continue working. So if you ha are in a scientific back with this, working on this with a scientific background, come to that lightning talk or talk to me or go to the Chaos Welle Assembly, which is where our pamphlets are. Okay, so if someone has is doing scientific work, please approach this young man. Okay, Signal Angel is showing up again with the last question. Someone asks about the legal situation, about dongles on devices, How does that is that compatible with property law? Good question. Uh, property law is... I, as I said, I'm not a legal expert, but I don't think it's a huge obstacle because the devices are not g being given dongles in retrospect. These are devices that are sold with dongles. So if, if I buy a device like this and I know that a restriction like this is in force on the device, then legally it's probably not a problem because I knew this when I bought it. The lockdown isn't brought in at a later stage, which doesn't make the whole thing much better. But I don't think there's a, pro a problem with property law, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Another applause for Max Mehl, please.